All right, guys, welcome back to part number two. Maybe we'll call this 1.5 of the frame lock project. I'm quickly realizing that I have bitten off way more than I can chew. Not more than I can chew, but it's a very big meal. Let's put it that way. And I need to take a whole bunch of little tiny bites and it's gonna be a process to get this done. Typically when you build a knife like a fixed blade, they're fairly straightforward. You have an idea, a shape, a concept, a style, and really, you can kind of imagine all the all the steps in your mind and nothing really changes or there's no surprises that really come up. Uh, typically, you know when you're using just good stock and good handle material. Even something like this friction folder that we had done and this was kind of going to be the precursor to this project. This was really quite straightforward. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that you could fix and adjust on the fly when you're building a friction folder. There's a few critical dimensions and even those aren't as critical as what I'm learning they are on a frame lock. There's a lot more parts that affect other parts on a frame lock knife than on something like this. So with that being said, I've done six hours of design on this last night, probably about two the day before in that video, and I'm kind of at starting over again because I've realized something that, that I didn't do properly. <laughs> now, a lot of you guys had recommended I check out Ecom Knives, Mike, and I have. I mean, I've subscribed to this channel probably for like three years now. Super, super great information. If you want great information on building a frame lock, I'd say he has probably got the best series on YouTube. Hands down, he shows you every little detail. And actually, Mike and I were chatting last night on Instagram, and you know, he's just saying, oh, you know, one thing, check this out, and I do this differently, and I do this. And he said, you know, there's things that have changed since he made that video series. Nothing major, but a few little things that have really helped him out, and he's just giving this information to me. So, Mike, thank you to you. Uh, what a great guy, and, and just to share his incredible wealth of knowledge, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours of experience making frame locks, and uh, he just gives all that information away to make our lives easier. So that is really awesome. Thinking about that, I was looking at his designs and let me kind of show you what I've done yesterday. I basically rescaled everything so we've got the blade portion properly. And actually really quickly on that topic, a lot of you guys are saying to, you know, it's a waste to just grind down this material to the right thickness. And I agree it, it is, but I don't know. I'm not comfortable forging this out and drawing it out. And I don't know a single blacksmith in my area. I, it's not like I can just say, hey, let me call up this guy and take it over to his forge and draw this out. You know, I could probably spend several weeks and try and hook up with somebody and get this thing scheduled so we can draw it out. Now that we're started this project, I don't want to add another complication. So, so a lot of you guys are going to think this is complete waste and in a way it is, but I'm going to be machining this down and wasting a lot of material. A lot of this stuff is just going to turn into a powdery metal dust but that's the way it is, that, that's how we're gonna go about it. Sometimes you just need to make a decision on a project and roll, this is the decision. Also, a lot of you guys were wondering if I was going to take some of this and do a spacer. I am indeed going to do that. So for the back of the knife here, where we need the little spacer, that part right there, I am going to be using some of this Damascus for that. I think it'll kind of tie the whole project together nicely, and, uh, and there should be enough for that. Oh, my contact is driving me nuts. Ugh, I'm gonna have to put on my glasses. Also, one other thing I'm thinking about is for the steel that I'm gonna use for the handles, I'm thinking about using Nitro V. I have a lot of Nitro V, I like the, the corrosion resistance of it, and the one thing I really like about Nitro V is it's very machinable. I just wanna show you one concern a lot of you guys had had about the knife when it's closed. I'll quickly show you on the computer, and I, I don't think it's gonna be a big concern, but maybe it is, I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. All right, so the software I'm using to do this drawing, it's SketchUp. And it is pretty clunky, but um, a lot of you guys had some really good suggestions of other uh, other software that I should try out, and I'm definitely gonna look into that, but just not right now. I need to focus on getting this done. Uh, so I'm just gonna continue with SketchUp, but I certainly do wanna try a lot of those awesome suggestions you guys had had. Uh, so there we established a pivot point there, and um, a lot of you guys had said that uh, you had concerns of where this blade was gonna be closed, that it would cut you when it's closed. Now, that's gonna be what it's like, and obviously the area of concern would be in here. Now, I'm not sure, when I look at this, I think that looks fine. Let, let's see, also, I'll probably be putting a choil in here, a little Spanish notch, just because I like them. Um, knowing that, let's come to about right here. We've got like, what, almost 80 thou, 70 thou. I don't know if that's enough. My initial thoughts, I mean, I'm speaking from a guy who has no experience with this stuff, Looks good to me. Uh, let me know though, do you like? Do you know, have you made one of these and you know that's gonna be a problem? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Obviously, as we go down this way, we've got tons of room, we'll put our spacer in here, probably start like this and come up to there, something like that, so that's not a concern. But uh, I really wonder if that is going to be a big deal or not. You know, when I look at this friction folder we made, I mean, we're kind of close there, but nowhere close enough, to, well, I mean, I can, I can put my pinky in there and press it as hard as I want and I'm not gonna cut myself, just out of curiosity. Let's see what we're at. So we're 77 thou. 
77,000th of an inch on this one. And that, you know what, if I get this, I'm totally happy. I'm not gonna cut myself on that right there. Safe as a button. So I think we're gonna be totally fine here. I think that concern, I mean, obviously, if I had, I, had I brought this around more, oh, let me use this clunky program again. Click on this, and then add this. It, it is clunky, I'm sure there's faster ways to go about this too, but I haven't, uh, haven't taken the time to really learn this program, and so I pay for it in, uh, in how long that it takes me to do anything. Come on, there we go. Uh, move our pivot point again, blah, 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 blah. Now, obviously, if I had, uh, if we were closing it up right tight like that, yeah, that's gonna cut you. That's not gonna be good at all. And in theory, you know, it could work. You could do this, but I like this, and I like the idea that this part where the blade starts to come out is very similar to the, the space here. I kind of like to keep that consistent, and I really do think that these curves, the curve of the handle, the curve of the blade, will be nice and elegant, so I'm pretty happy with this design. I don't think this is gonna pose any issues in here, so, although that was a really great observation you guys had made, I certainly do appreciate that, and like I said, maybe I'm just on glue here right now, I mean, as epoxying and using lacquer thinner this morning, maybe I'm not thinking right, but I think if we've got 80 thou in there, we're totally good. So. Right now I've got this track is set up and it's not a full 180 degrees and I have laid everything out so that when this spins all the way around it's got the proper locations and, and like everything's figured out. This track will work really really good. It will stop at the position I want it to so we're not going the full 180 when we close. We're doing less than 180 degrees and these pins are set up to reflect that. So I'm gonna have to take all this and redo it, kind of rotate it around and switch it around and swivel it around so that I can make this work. That's the plan. But I'm not gonna bore you guys with all that boring staring at the computer work. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and then we'll come back once we've got our design tested out. We'll probably cut it out again and just try it. I don't know, maybe we'll even mock it up with some scrap steel, just some mild steel to see how it goes or maybe not, I'm not sure. But I'll get back to this and I'll see you in just a moment. I just had a, a major face palm moment, if you will. So when I'd done my design and I, I kind of drew everything out and I widened up the thickness of the blade, you know, I got this part all set up the way I'd wanted it to. There's a very critical part of this, a very simple part that I completely overlooked and I don't know how I did it. Let me explain. This is an awesome little knife. I think this is going great. If I take the billet that I have, the steel that I'm gonna use to make this and I put it on there, Therein lies our problem. <laughs> I completely forgot to take into account the flipper tab from this billet. So I know I had just said that there's no way on earth I'm gonna forge this out, but my mind is going there. My mind is going there, even though I don't want it to. You know, if I was just working with a piece of, of steel, not this steel, I, I mean, I could just get a wider piece of stock, but my concern is this, is that I, my forge is just a single burner forge, and it gets it plenty hot. I can heat up steel really, really well. I'm wondering if I actually need to reach forge welding temperatures in order to draw this out. My thinking is that that's not necessary, that if I just get this really good and hot, I mean, be super careful not to hammer it when it's cooling off, when it's cold, only hit it when it's hot. Is it safe? Is it safe for me to draw this out and, and get a little bit more width out of this billet? I could also get a little length too. Maybe I could, you know, like make another blade from it. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I've sent a message to Alec on Instagram. I think he's probably sleeping right now with the time zone and everything, but I'm not sure. I asked him what his thoughts are if it, if it would be wise for me to try doing this. It just kind of ups the risk level of this project on my end. Uh, I've never done this kind of stuff before, so... Holy moly moly. I just don't know. I just don't know what to do. You know, it would sure be easy to make a little fixed blade out of this steel. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. But my goodness, 
you know, fixed blades. It's like, hey, let's make a fixed blade, and you make a fixed blade. But this, I, I mean, everybody says it's a learning process, and I'm realizing that there's so much learning that goes into just getting ready to make it. You know, once we're going to make it, I'm going to learn all kinds of stuff as well. Once we start machining parts and seeing what things fit like and interferences and, and all our tolerances, I mean, that's going to be a learning process all on its own. But there's this whole other design process. I did not think it would be this difficult to, to design uh, a frame lock folder like this. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, really, we've made like, I shouldn't say we've made no progress because we have made progress, but we haven't made the progress that I was hoping to make today. Oh boy. Anyways, guys, you know what? This is real life. This is just a dude in his garage with a really sweet piece of Damascus. Uh, I'm a, not a blacksmith. I, I don't do forging and I'm kind of stuck. I'm in a bit of a pickle. From you guys, I would ask especially for your patience and any input. If you guys have some great suggestions, I know you guys are a lot smarter than I am. Um, so many of you guys know this stuff and you're probably just watching me struggle and you're like, oh, that poor guy. I would love your help right now. I would really enjoy your feedback. You guys have been great at, at, at really presenting it to me and I need it right now. I really, really do. Um, but anyways, we're going to keep going. Probably going to end this vlog right here. Hopefully I'll hear back from Alec. And uh, I'm just going to carry on some other knives, some really simple knives, fixed blade knives that I know how to do. And uh, we're going to stew on this for a little bit. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers. One more thing before I go. I'm trying to kind of share updates on my Instagram feed of this build as it goes along. So if, if you don't follow me there, uh, feel free to head over and I'm putting little snippets in my stories and uh, try and give you a bit of more uh, real time updates as to how this project is going. So simplelittlelife.ca, check it out. There's a link below. I'll see you over there.